it's me again. And this is the video that talks about the share discrepancy between Oilco and MMTLP. Let's get into it. Torchlight executives were hoping to sell the property in exchange for stock. This would create what's known as a non-taxable event. A lower taxable event would be if there was a combination of stock in the new company or the buying company's non-voting stock as well as a cash dividend. That would reduce the amount of taxes owed on the cash dividend. A bit similar to the Dr. Pepper case. Not entirely, it's just the, the taxable with the share and then the tax differences that might pan out. So the question was, you know, are they intending to do oil co, which is Torchlight 2, or are they going to sell the company? The keywords in the press release that had me concerned were the permanent management team. They were higher on a permanent team, and that raised a lot of flags for me. However, this could convert with the new company, the new buying company, if that makes sense. If the buying company gets the management team, well, great. Who cares at that point? And the second question was the share discrepancy. So according to this tweet by George Palacaris, the, the total outstanding shares of the preferred MMTLP shares was about $165 million, just under $165 million. But if you look at this, the oil co um, filing on the Silver Flume website, that's the Nevada State Comptroller essentially, you can see that there are 250 million common shares and 25 million preferred shares. And I thought long and hard about this share discrepancy and I tried to dig around for it. And about four or five cognacs later, Neckties loosened. Um, I was able to figure it out. I'm going to visualize this for you. Common shares are 250 million. Preferred shares are 25 million. Why are there preferred additional preferred shares? This doesn't make any sense at first. But then let's do some math. How many times does 25 million go into 250 million? This only occurred after I had about four or five cognac. So th then I was able to do the math. That goes in about 10%. That's an interesting ratio. Why is, why is 10% this ratio? Let's take a look at this. Remember how we talked about in what is oil co? Oh, solve the spin off spin out and that 10%. Here you go. That's the holdback dividend, right? So the holdback dividend is what I've also called the residual because it's whatever is left over after um, underwriting fees or any uh, miscellaneous fees associated with tr this transaction. They hold 10% and then whatever is left over after those miscellaneous and administrative fees are redispersed in to the shareholders in the form of a... Um, hold back dividend because the amount was originally 10 percent this is why it's 10 percent of the common shares if that makes sense it's 10 percent of the value of the common shares so you have 250 million common shares 10 percent of that is 25 million that is where your hold back dividend is going to go because you're going to give it later right and then you're going to have it disappearing it's going to disappear, right? With, but it could be, it's also set up to be pro rata, meaning they give you it as it goes along. But once you get the money, the shares disappear. So once you receive all your dividends from this, the 250 million shares, This will stick around and you get that extra preferred share later. You will get that money back later, which is, this is why this is the common share for the special dividend. And then this is the holdback dividend, more or less. That's why there's preferred shares and common shares with Oilco. 
But let's talk about that holdback dividend. What does that mean? The holdback dividend is held back because there is a sale. There is a sale. That's why you have a holdback dividend. Not a spinoff, not a spin out, but a sale. Because you see this and this, and that's the 10% that's your holdback dividend, that gives me assurance that they are indeed selling it and not doing Torchlight 2.0. Okay, one that gave me good assurance. Well, why is there a share discrepancy? This really remains largely unknown. Why is this 250 million and not 165 million? We are hoping that there won't be any dilution. These numbers sort of work out and it's a nice round number. It could be one of three cases. It could be all cash transaction. It could be an all stock transaction. Or it could be a cash and stock transaction with a reduced tax fee. So, what are we getting? Well, if you convert the 165 million Torchlight shares to 250 million common oil co shares, that is a ratio of 1.515. So, for every one MMTLP, you would get 1.515. Oil co shares. That's an odd conversion, but it makes sense if you're going to get some stock in multiple companies. As we talked about, there could be multiple buyers. There's different properties. There's two main properties. And uh, the Hazel and the Orgrande. And there could be multiple buyers. The Orgrande is a big property, a lot of oil, it's expensive. If you parcel it out and have multiple buyers come in, that could be the case. Uh, it certainly is then less work for one company to bring all that infrastructure in. Then, you know, if you have several companies there, it's a lot easier and the demand's a little bit greater. Because if you have one company developing the property, it's going to take a while to get that infrastructure and get everything. But if you split it up... And have several, and have a couple subdivisions, you know, then you're going to get your neighborhood built a lot quicker. So, with this being said, like, if the dividend price, as I explained on my live stream, you know, is, is 35 bucks, maybe you get, you know, that'd be like a half share then. That'd be this, would be like a marathon share. That'd be like, if, if marathon's into this. So, let's get into those other companies. I said in my other video that I would be looking for companies who were issuing new stock or doing stock buyback. I bit off a bit more than I could chew because it's stock buyback season. <laughs> for oil companies, right now it's stock buyback season. So, what happened was because COVID, oil tanked, they had to cut costs. And this past third quarter, oil was doing really good. And they were still on the cut cost mode. Most of the major oil companies beat earnings. So what oil companies like to do is share buybacks when they have a bit more profit. They will buy back shares to say to increase cash flow. Uh, and then it gives you the, the stockholder equity. You know, that's how you can get your money quicker. Instead of a dividend, you can get a dividend and then sell your stock. Or keep the stock. So the company starts doing share buybacks. And basically they just buy back uh, ownership from the shareholders back to the actual company. They reabsorb that ownership. There's two ways to finance the, the Ore Grande property through stock sale. They could issue new stock, but that would create dilution to the shareholders. And a lot of these companies don't want to create dilution to the shareholders. So the next logical step would be a stock buyback and then reissuance. Um... So I was looking for companies that had positions already in Texas, Permian or West Texas, that were publicly listed and that were doing stock buybacks. <laughs> and there was quite a few. These wouldn't be the companies necessarily who are buying the property. They could be no relation. But these are the current companies that I found that have plays that are currently doing stock buybacks. Exxon is buying back $9 billion worth of their stock. 
in the next two years. So they're going to start it like fourth quarter or 2022, and they're going to buy back stock into the, you know, 2023. Let's go on to the next one, Marathon. Marathon's doing a $500 million of share repurchases in the fourth quarter, and they've already executed $200 million worth of shares. So Marathon's doing the share repurchase program of about $500 million. If they do it in the fourth quarter, that means by Q1, um, after all the shares get converted to Oilco, they'll have that money. Again, this is speculation, but these are just companies who have plays uh, who are currently doing the share buybacks. Devon Energy. So Devon Energy is doing a $1 billion share repurchase program. According to Barron's, and this is all uh, after third quarter earnings, guys. All these statements came out in October and November. And let's go to Diamondback. Diamondback's a big one, and according to this article, they're doing a $2 billion share buyback. So all of these oil companies have reported very ample profits, and they can't issue it on the dividend, so they're doing the share buyback program. Share repurchase is also a clue that the company is getting ready to absorb back that equity, and then they're going to reissue it when they buy the Oro Grande, trade it for stock. The stock sale. Let's keep going. Chevron Oil reported uh, free cash flow was at an all-time high of $7.1 billion. Now, in the ConocoPhillips case, they touted, woo, we're, we're bumping our free cash flow to $4 billion next year. Look at this, $7.1 billion. That's huge. It's their all-time record high, and they're issuing share buybacks like crazy right now. But it's an undisclosed amount, how much, they're is how much share buyback they're doing right now. <clears throat> so in summary, the holdback dividend is 10%, right? You hold back 10% of the amount. If you issue new shares, that would be 10% of the shares, as explained by in this agreement right here. This was from the merger agreement. Sources cited below. The 10% matches the $250 million common shares. $25 million is 10% of $250 million. That would explain why you have a preferred share. That's going to go for the holdback dividend. The fact that they have a holdback dividend set up as a preferred share in Oilco tells me that they are planning to sell the property if the plan hasn't already been put in the oven. The share discrepancy for oil co can be explained if they do a different stock in different companies issuance. You get some Marathon, maybe you get an Exxon, maybe you get a Chevron, maybe you get a Diamondback. With these, that's why you would get this specific number, which means that the plan was already put into play when these shares were issued back in late August when this was filed in late August, oil co, that means the plan was already in effect. That's why they set up preferred shares. That's why there's a conversion rate. Again, this is speculation. This is my opinion piece. Uh, but looking at the merger agreement and how, yes, they're going to issue a separate holdback dividend and seeing that, okay, see, what I thought was MMTLP was not going to go away because of that holdback dividend. It would just stay around. And then it would be issued through Oil Co. Or it would sell, go into Oil Co. What was left would go into Oil Co. And then you'd get the holdback dividend from Oil Co. But it went all into Oil Co., and I guess I was too a bit blindsided by emotion, but that's okay. But after a few days, um, and after staring at the screen blankly and racking my brain over this, uh, that would suggest then, yeah, that's when you need the extra, like, conversion ratio. <clears throat> because it's not going to go over one-to-one -one for every company. Okay, here's a little post-edit excerpt. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that 
Torchlight also had several share exchanges like this. This would be what Oil Co. would be, would be a share exchange. Um, you remember George Palacare was talking about the Canco, the Canadian company Canco share conversions? That was the original Torchlight company. Here it is. Canco was Torchlight. Colco was Torch. These were Canadian share exchange spinoffs. So Oil Co. essentially would be the share exchange spinoff so they could get the shares from the buying companies and then convert it to you. So it's like a Colco, Canco. What does this mean if there's multiple companies buying that? Well, multiple companies buying it means one, you get a higher price. Multiple interested companies mean that they can negotiate higher price. If it's split up into smaller parcels, that's less of a discount. I know everybody's like saying, well, it's so much land, give a discount, give a discount. Okay, now if you have multiple people buying it, it's smaller, more manageable properties, less of a discount, right? That translates to better dividends for you. So with finding this, my conviction remains very high on MMTLP, and it will be very interesting to see what the next few weeks brings, as John Berta says. And I hope this sheds some light on the oil co-share discrepancy. Again, this isn't like financial advice and... Yes, I'm admitting that this is speculation and a reach. That's, that's, you're just watching one bird's thoughts here. You're just watching my thought process uh, unfold in front of you. I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.